In this video, we're going to discuss the integration by parts, which you already know very well in dimension one, and which most likely you know as well in higher dimension. Uh, now, if it's not the case, then stay with us. If you know integration by parts in higher dimension, then you can just skip this video or fast forward through it. Let me start with defining the support of a function that is defined from an open interval i, included in r, to r. Well, the support will be the closure of the points where the function does not vanish, meaning that it's not equal to zero. That is the support of the function. Let me give you an example here. If you take f, which is 1 minus x squared when x is smaller than 1, and 0 outside, then obviously the support of the function will be basically where it's not uh, equal to 0, and that is the interval minus 1, 1. You can also define the, the support in higher dimensions, so if you consider a domain omega in Rd, included in Rd, then the support of the function will be basically the same definition. It will be the closure of the set of points where f is not equal to zero. So if you look at this graph down here, then the support of the function that is represented with this graph is the closed disk, well you can't really see the, the axis here, but it's centered in zero, zero, with radius 1. Now, let me consider a function u, which is c1 of a domain omega, and I'm going to take closure of omega, so it's omega bar, it needs to be c1 all the way to the boundary, uh, and uh, I assume that it will be with compact support uh, in uh, omega bar. Then, uh, then for all uh, i in between 1 and d, what d is the dimension of my space omega, then the integral of the partial derivative of u with respect to xi will be the integral on the boundary of us nis, where again ni is the outward normal unit uh, vector field. Okay, uh, now I would like to just point something out, which is uh, obvious, <laughs> but I'm going to, to, to point it out anyway. Uh, if d is equal to 1, uh, and if omega is the interval a, b, with a small and b, then what is the integral over omega of du over dxi? Uh, what is it? Well, obviously, we only have one variable here, so dxi is just dx. Uh, so what is the, the, the partial derivative? It's just derivative in this case, it's like a straight d. So the integral of du over dx will be, well, the integral over the, the boundary of omega. The boundary of the interval uh, a, b is simply the set composed of two elements, a and b. So that's what we have here. Now, uh, let me just, just write it completely. So basically it's the sum for 2s, s equal a and s equal b. So uh, that's what we have, u a and a plus u b and b. But as you can see, uh, what is n a and what is n b? Well, n a, uh, if you look at the interval a b, then n a and n b, actually one is one and one is minus one, right? I mean, basically uh, you have one uh, for n b and minus one for n a, right? I mean, think about the interval, and here is uh, n a and here is n b, right? Okay, so you have u uh, b minus u a, which by the way, uh, what I'm just writing here, let me actually write this uh, like this, what I'm saying is that the integral of the derivative is u b minus u a, right? I mean, okay, so I just, again, that's very obvious, but I just wanted to point that. Um, okay, now let me give a few corollaries, two corollaries, um, that will be for the integration by part, that will be uh, IP1 and IP2. IP1 says that uh, basically, uh, okay, so um, the, the integral of omega of du over dxi, vx, uh, and then the lambda d, uh, as a reminder, is the uh, Lebesgue uh, measure of dimension d, and that would be minus the integral of omega of ux, dv over dxy uh, with this uh, same measure plus the integral over uh, the, um, the, the boundary of uv and i.
Okay, so uh, here is uh, uh, IP2. Uh, then I'm writing that the integral of the Laplace operator uh, applied to u v is equal to minus the integral of omega del u scalar product del v plus the integral uh, over the boundary of v gradient of u n. Okay, uh, and by the way, that we will use in a chapter four. Uh, at some point when we are doing the variational formulation and we'll go from the uh, variational formulation to, well, you, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see that. So coming up, chapter four, you, you remember that, that IP2, that, that's going to become useful. All right. Um, okay, now, now what you can see is this gradient U, del U, uh, uh, the scalar with N, that will be given a name and that will be called the normal derivative. So DU over DN called the normal derivative is gradient del, if you prefer, U, scalar N. So here is IP1, here is IP2, and that is our uh, definition of the integration by parts in uh, higher dimensions.